What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be going over where and how to place your nodes when it comes to grain as well as halation. You might pick up on a couple little shot matching tips and tricks here and there, um, but of course that's not the purpose of today's video. But with that said, let's go ahead and jump right into Resolve. I've gone ahead and edited this little timeline here. There's not much to it, just a few little clips from a trip last year to Utah. So we're scrubbing through there. Uh, all of this is shot on red. However, we are shooting our first video on the C70 right now. We just traded the red Komodo for the C70. If you do wanna see a YouTube video on that topic over why I switched and what I think of the C70, let me know. Um, but we'll go ahead uh, and jump right in. All, the, all I've done so far is just edit the clips. As you can see, they're just red raw files. And so now we're gonna go through uh, and pretty much build this grade from the ground up. You're gonna see why I place things where I do. Uh, and we're just gonna talk through some decisions here. So. Um, knowing that everything is red, that makes it pretty simple. There's a bunch of different ways to convert your footage from the log profile uh, to whatever your output profile is going to be, which in 99% of cases is Rec. 709. That's what it's going to be for today. Uh, and our color management settings, we'll just go over that real quick. We see uh, our color science is DaVinci YRGB. Rec. 709, Gamma 2.4, and the output color space is the same as timeline. And then we'll go ahead and do shift, uh, make sure I'm on our first clip here, shift, and then click to the end, the last clip. That's just gonna select everything for us. We'll right click and hit add into a new group. And we're just gonna call this group red. And as you notice, now we have a couple extra uh, little icons up here. We have our group pre-clip, our clip, our group post-clip, and then a timeline node tree. Uh, and that's really the order that everything flows in, from your pre-clip to your clip, post-clip, and then timeline nodes. And the placement of everything can be very important, and it can be a nice little strategy when it comes to creating new looks. Um, you can use those things to your advantage. So let's go ahead and jump into the group pre-clip. We'll start to break down uh, one of the ways that I'll incorporate grain into my looks here. So first things first, uh, I do wanna introduce a, a couple plugins that I use. One is Cinematch, which is from Film Convert, the team at Film Convert, and they make some incredible products. I use both Cinematch and Film Convert on some projects, and same with Look Designer. Uh, for today's purposes, we're actually gonna be using DaVinci Resolve's built-in grain, but just know that it can apply to any grain you're using. In the group pre-clip, this is where I'll start to treat the footage in the first method. Uh, I guess you can kind of call this a, a classic method where we're going for a much more classic look uh, where we're gonna be treating halation and grain as if it was actually from the film stock we captured on. And there basically you're, you're just treating the footage you have on your camera uh, as if that was captured on film. So if you were to capture that footage from your camera on actual film, you wouldn't actually have any additional control over how the halation or the grain looked after the fact. So what I mean by that is if something was exposed a certain way, the halation that you're gonna see based on the exposure there is set on how it was captured in camera. You wouldn't have the freedom or the ability um, to necessarily correct exposure before that grain inhalation is applied. So in this classic method, the halation is actually gonna be the first thing we're applying. So we're gonna go over here into halation, drag this on, you're not gonna see much change yet, but in the processing color space, we're actually able to select red wide gamut because currently we are still in the red wide gamut color space. So scrolling down here, red wide gamut RGB, that's the color space we captured it in. So that's telling the halation OFX tool what color space we're working in, what color space it's to be expecting uh, so that it can apply everything properly for us. So it actually saves you a little bit of trouble there. So now we have halation uh, enabled, it's in our group pre-clip. Uh, again, it is taking place as if it was captured on film as is before any color correction that's gonna be taking place in the clip node tree, which is right here after the fact. So now we're gonna actually jump into the group post clip. And this is where we will take our film convert nitrate plugin, drop that on top of there. And I'm gonna turn off the grain because as I mentioned, we're not gonna be using their grain in this tutorial, but we'll go ahead and choose our camera. We shot it on a red Komodo and red wide gamut RGB log 3G10, hit apply. And now I've got a proper conversion. As you see, this is overexposed. So we're gonna be correcting that exposure in the clip node tree. So going right here, we're just gonna take this offset and bring it down. And if I bring our waveform over here from my secondary display, you can see we're really starting to get all that information back. It wasn't ever actually gone. And now we've got a pretty good look there. Uh, so moving on, same thing with this clip, a little bit overexposed. We'll just take that offset and bring it down. Really keeping it simple, we're only affecting offset at the moment. 
And this is a good shot of Josh here. We can really start to see this halation right here. And so this is a great way for us to look at how the offset doesn't actually affect the halation because the halation was applied before the offset, the exposure adjustment. And that's the same thing you would recognize uh, if you actually had halation from a film negative that we're grading inside Resolve after it's been scanned. You wouldn't be able to manipulate how that halation affected the footage. So to continue with that more classic and uh, authentic method of applying grain and halation, our second node in the group preclip node tree is of course gonna be our film grain. And so another principle behind this, again, if you were to capture footage using a film camera, you wouldn't be able to adjust the grain after the fact. The grain is coming before any corrections because it's actually baked into the film negative itself. So you can make some adjustments, obviously, in Resolve uh, based on the type of grain you want. We're going to go with 35 millimeter 400T, uh, and I typically soften it up just a little bit. We'll just increase that softness. We'll turn up the strength and increase the size just a touch. And you can see how that results uh, in a pretty soft grain overall here, uh, but it's still a little bit in your face. You know, it's still very obviously there. And so now in this shot as well, you can start to see that halation over here on the left side of the shoe. And if we take a look at this guy here, anytime you have a really, you know, just flat section of the image, it's a pretty good area to look at grain and examine how it's, how it's looking. And you can see it really does kind of just look like it's part of the, uh, the image itself. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method, which I usually use, I would say, one of the methods I use 90% of the time. Um, and that is, again, when I'm, I'm using a lot of film stocks, especially when we're talking about a grade that contains grain. If you're using film grain, it makes sense to use film LUTs as well. We're just gonna go ahead and clear everything off that we had before. So we're just kind of back to square one. Empty node here, we've just kept our correction in the clip node tree, and then we're back in the group post clip. So we'll use a look designer plugin, and this is another similar plugin to Film Convert Nitrate. I, I use both of them quite a bit. We're gonna go ahead and select our input profile. You can also use CSTs if you prefer DaVinci Resolve's color space transform, totally fine. Um, it's really just a subjective thing, and in this case, we're gonna be using the built-in color space transforms uh, with the different plugins today. So we'll go through and uh, scroll down to Red Wide Gamut Log 3G10 IPP2 in our look designer input profile, output profile. Uh, this is where uh, we're gonna get a little more creative and I'm actually gonna go with uh, film scan. And that's basically the same thing as Cineon film log that you'd see in the color space transform of DaVinci Resolve. Uh, it's, it's basically a, a film negative uh, profile. And what that works really well with is one of my favorite LUTs. That's gonna be uh, Rec. 709 Kodak 2383 D60. So we apply that LUT and now we've got this really nice look. Um, again, we can go back into the Look Designer plugin. We can increase some saturation, not gonna go too far. And now we've got a film positive here with our option to put negatives in here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do a negative stock Gen 2, which enables this negative stock Gen 2 dropdown. And we'll just pick a film stock uh, here. We'll go with Agfa XTR 250, one of my favorites. So you'll see what that did there. Just add a little more blue in the shadows and we can probably go ahead and just warm things up a little bit. So one other way that I like to place my grain is between the color space transform that converts our camera space footage into Cineon Film Lock. So this node here in the group post clip is converting red wide gamut log 3G10 into our film scan output profile. And then we have this node here converting the film scan into Rec. 709. This is that film LUT, the Kodak 2383. So just before that, we'll do Shift S to add a node prior. And this is where we're gonna add that film grain node this time. We'll go back to 35 millimeter 400T, add a touch of softness, increase that strength, and increase the size just a little bit. And so zooming in now, you're gonna see this is a much more kind of aggressive grain. And to me, I kind of just like how in your face this grain is. However, you can still kind of turn it down a little bit if you want to. You can take that strength, dial it back, we can decrease the softness and make it a bit sharper. And so now you've got a smaller, softer grain. Really a lot of it is just figuring out what the project needs and experimenting. Um, you know, See what feels right. I'm really just kind of showing you guys a couple options so you have permission to experiment. That's really where all these different ideas come from is just screwing around and messing things up. You don't need permission to do something a certain way. Just experiment, see what works well. At the end of the day, if you have a good looking image, I think the mission has been accomplished. Um, granted, there are certain rules to abide by, but in the end, we're, we're colorists, we're artists. So that's what we're doing here. We're finding new ways to do that. There's always more than one way to achieve a certain outcome. Um, so actually the last method I'm gonna show you, just so you can see the difference here, is by placing that grain at the end. And I'll just show you what that looks like. Uh, we're gonna take a still right here, 
and we'll go back and we'll grab a still from the other method as well. We're gonna extract this. I'm gonna keep all the settings the same and we're gonna place that node after our Rec 709 conversion. In this look, uh, it's much softer. It's, it's hardly even there. So uh, I think you would really have to bump up the strength to get it close to the same levels. And now it looks pretty much the same, but it does take a lot more strength to get it there. So we could go a whole lot deeper into this topic. I uh, don't wanna bore you guys too much. Really just wanna show you a couple different options so that you can experiment on your own. Typically option number two is where I'm working most often. That's the, the grain node being placed uh, before our final Rec 709 conversion, typically before a lot of the, the primaries adjustments I'll make as well. And then another one, the second most common, if we delete that is gonna be uh, right here in the beginning. Halation you can throw in as the first node after your corrections, uh, but I think the most authentic place for halation is always gonna be that very first node because that's how the halation would naturally appear if you actually shot the footage on film. Looks like we just had another fill light die. Currently I'm using two Nanlite options and uh, they, they tend to keep dying on me earlier than the battery says they're going to. So if you have any recommendations, drop those in the comments as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. We'll drop a comment letting me know what kind of stuff you wanna see next. Or if you have any questions, I'd love to answer. I read all your comments and I do my best to respond to as many as I can. Be sure to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one.